Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to solve one of the problems on propagation delay. Let's understand the question. The question says that in a 2 input CMOS NAND gate, mu n COX is equal to 20 microampere by volt square, mu p COX is equal to 10 microampere by volt square. All PMOS have W by L of N MOS equal to 20. This line technically implies that W by L of PMOS is equal to W by L of N MOS which is equal to 20. VT0 means no substrate bias effect of N MOS is equal to 1. VT0 for PMOS is equal to minus 1 volt. Now you might get intimidated by what is written next but if you pay attention it's a googly type of a question it's a very straightforward question just understand what it is trying to tell you let's see if one of the input is held permanently at vdd see we are talking about a two input nand gate right so if one of the input is held permanently at vdd now suppose let's draw a nand in static style This is my NAND gate, input A, input B, input A and input B and this is my truth table 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, A and B and this is my output where I know this is 1, this is 0, this is 1, this is 1. Now the question clearly says if one of the input is held permanently at VDD, so let's say that input A is held permanently to VDD, so these two cases go out of my equation and here if you see if one of the input of a NAND is connected to VDD then the other input if it's 0 the output is 1 if it's 1 the output is 0 that means my NAND is now behaving like an inverter this is a catch in the question correct if one of the input is held at VDD then NAND behaves like an inverter so that's the first thing which we could decode okay let's go ahead if one of the input is held permanently at VDD and other is switched from 0 volts to VDD means B is going from 0 to 1 with 0 rise time. 0 rise time means it is presuming that it is straight away rising from 0 to 1 and it's not this. This is not the case. This is the case. With 0 rise time for a duration greater than the fall delay of a NAND gate. Now fall delay and rise delay right. Currently, it says that zero rise time, this is my rise time, correct? For a duration greater than fall delay of the NAND gate. Currently, let's not pay attention to that part. And then switch back to zero volts with zero fall time. So it goes back to zero volts from one to zero with zero fall time, correct? Then calculate propagation delay high to low and propagation delay low to high is what they are asking us. So what you need to understand here is first that this is nothing but an inverter now correct we have already found out the formula for propagation delay for inverter so we can use that the second thing they have given us is w by l of n mos and p mos is already given to us and they have also given us mu n cox and mu p cox the reason we can use this formula is because they have said that we can presume it to be an idle step response and not with rise and fall time that's the reason we can easily use the equations which we have already studied in that because we have w by l of n and w by l of p and mu n cox and mu p cox we can easily find kn and kp which is nothing but mu n cox w by l of n this is nothing but mu p cox w by l of p i'll just substitute from what it is here because everything is given to me assume vdd is 5 volts so this is also given to me and the total capacitance which is independent of MOSFET size is equal to 2 picofarad. Now what does this mean is total capacitance which is independent of MOSFET size means this block can drive another gates as well. But it is saying that it does not matter what gates it is driving. It is independent of the size of the gate and you can assume the total capacitance as nothing but 2 picofarad. One way of interpreting is this way. The other way of interpreting is we are assuming that there is anyways no load connected external. So here also the transistors might be sized and in this case they are sized correct. W by L of PMOS and NMOS both are sized and we know that the capacitance varies with size. But they are saying that the total capacitance is independent of MOSFET size which is equal to 2 picofarad. So we can straight away assume it to be 2 picofarad. So I have my load capacitance as 2 picofarad. 